Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas podcast, recorded in the Bob Studios. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number four of the History of Bad Ideas podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Brigger. And I'm your co-host, Jeff Now. First thing we'd like to do is congratulate Mr. Brigger on the birth of a new baby girl. We're going to... uh, excuse him for his tired and crankiness since he's not sleeping in these past four days but i just want to say congratulations jason thank you very much i'm on uh three hours of sleep right now so if i'm crankier than usual that's the reason why sorry (laughs) and then we also have a guest a second guest in the bob studio this week he is ghost hunter supernaturalist and author jeff morris hello Uh, how you doing jeff i'm doing all right Good. Jeff Morris is the co-founder of Miami Town Ghost Tours in southwestern Ohio, and he's also the co-author of several books of the Haunted Handbook line from Keen Communications, uh, which is Cincinnati Haunted Handbook, uh, includes also Nashville Haunted Handbook, Twin Cities Haunted Handbook, and the Chicago Haunted Handbook, and several others. Uh, Anything I missed there, Jeff? Uh, just, uh, just one book. Uh, the first book that I did was called Haunted Cincinnati in Southwest Ohio. That's right. And, um, then I got this, uh, series of books from Keen Communications and I've been working with that and, um, hopefully we'll continue to work with that. Good. And, uh, we got some questions for Jeff here in a little bit, but, uh, first we want to hit the listener feedback. You got any theme music for that, Jeff? Uh, we don't have any theme music for anything right now, Jason. <laughs> okay, good. And just to make it easier, since there's two Jeffs in the studios, uh, we're just going to go by Jeff as the co-host and Morris as the guest. It makes it a whole lot easier. That's fine with me. Morris, you got any issues with that? I have no issues with that. Okay. And if you did, we don't really care. <laughs> uh, not much of the listener feedback. You guys are disappointing us this week. Come on. Go to our Facebook page. Uh, first thing is from Kevin. Uh, Kevin Lane wanted to know what the top five NES games were, and uh, I think we can probably do that on a top five maybe next week. Yeah, we can hold that for a top five for okay. some top five, uh, point in the future. Okay. I think Super Mario Bros. 2 is going to be number one. That actually was one of my favorite games. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, that game was awful. Oh, I love the game. You know, Lu- Luigi would jump a little bit higher, and Peach would float. And... It did have the first gay character in a in a Nintendo game, Birdo. He would shoot the eggs. Remember ah, that? He was officially gay? I don't know, but I think they did make him asexual eventually. He okay. went to, from a guy to a female to asexual. Well, I figure if he was spitting out eggs, he would probably be a she, so... You yeah. don't know. Well, unless he's a seahorse. Do seahorses do that? The uh, male seahorse is the one that just dates the eggs. Look at that fun fact. Fun fact of the day. <laughs> And now Morris just left the studio. <laughs> uh, and then Nick, who was our guest last week, he decided to chime in on our Facebook page, History of Bad Ideas Podcast. Uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Morris, you go with that one. I would stop time. Like, in a way that everybody else, they'd be stopped so I can go around and I can do whatever Forever. I want. No, I can, I can do it at will. <laughs> Like, like, I could be a baseball star, like, like they could throw a pitch, and then I could stop it right when it's about right to the to the plate, and then I can just hit it, and I'd hit it really far because I'd be going much faster than anything else. <laughs> or I could be a magician. I could disappear without a problem. Well, I don't think you need a superpower to be a magician. Well, but, but I could make a lot of money because no one would ever be able to figure out that, that thing because the, I'd never let them know that I actually have this superpower that I could stop time. So you'd be a lot better than Chris Angel. He, he's pretty good. No, no, he's but, a, oh god, I hate that man. But he would be better than uh, Hugh Jackman from The Prestige, where he needs a machine to be able to make him disappear. Leave Hugh Jackman alone. He <laughs> sings and dances very, <laughs> yeah, he, very well. You could have a beer with that man. <laughs> Hugh Jackman is my man crush. Let's not talk any more about that. But I, I could have a beer with him. He's cool. He's cool. All right, Jason. What would your superpower be? Uh, I think I would go invisibility. Okay. You know, if you go on the bad guy side, you can go into any bank, take as much money as you want. Um, you know, if there's actually bad people in the world, which there is, you could go up and really fuck up their shit, and uh, they if, wouldn't even know it was you. But if you could stop time, you could do the same thing, but you could do it better because there's no motion sensors that could get you. There's 
I oh. think mine's better. I think my superpower beats your superpower. And, and, and if what, what's invisible? I mean, you. you I am. So your clothes will be floating. No, no, around, no, no. no so no. you have to walk around naked to do your capers. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. I'm okay. It's just me flipping and flopping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nobody would know. <laughs> and what is it going to be like? Sue Storm, kind of like that. Oh, so you had to have the unstable molecule suit to go correct, with you. Correct, okay, correct. You. And I'm not smart enough for that, so I would just be naked. Yeah. So, Jeff, what would be yours? Uh, teleportation. Why? You can get <laughs> anywhere you want without having to take, take all the time it takes to get there. I mean, I could go from here to there in the blink of an eye. As lazy as I am, you know how, I mean, I, I can go to the fridge without even getting up. I mean, come on, how great would that be? So you would be on time for podcasts. I would be on time for podcasts. <laughs> I would have been there right away. But no, I had to drive over here. Into farm country. I know, out in the sticks. I could have just, boom, been there instantly. Which is funny because here in the Bob studio, Morris showed up on time. He wanted to make a good impression. He did. And he stopped time, so that's why. No, that, he was actually late, but he stopped time to confuse us. And... I, I, yeah, I did. I had just a little bit of time to get here, and um, wait, I can stop time, and I can just get here, and then. And when he when he rang the door or the the door to the studio, I, I had the door opened mysteriously. I was I was invisible. <laughs> uh, let's see. There was a couple uh, comments about Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday. Uh, as his role as the first DC zombie and his hatred for Ford Focuses. Uh, that that would you? be Foci. Foci, Foci, okay. Um, Kevin came back with the Solomon Grundy and his role as the first DC zombie. What was your t- Jeff, what was your take on uh, Solomon Grundy? Well, pretty much the only thing I really know about Solomon Grundy is from the old Super Friends cartoon where Solomon Grundy crush car. Or I don't know if you saw the Solomon Grundy wants pants too uh, little <laughs> clip on uh, YouTube, but uh, uh, I suppose technically he is a zombie because he dies and comes back to life. And he is in Arrow this season, which you're not caught up on. Which I'm yet. not caught up on, but, but yeah. Morris, you watch Arrow? I do not. You're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there you go. That's all we got on Solomon Grundy. He's a cool character, but. It's Solomon Grundy, so sorry, Kevin, we just can't talk much more about him. And I think that's about it for this week on the listener feedback. And then uh, next thing you want to do is uh, talk to Mr. Morris here about uh, any questions we have about his books, uh, what he does. Jeff, you want to start? You got any questions you want to think about? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> 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 he might Nick Nick might lose his uh, spot as the best color man in the business. Let me get that here. Good job, Jeff. Thank you. No. Okay, Morris, how did you start in this in this realm writing books and just your interest in the supernatural? Uh, I, I get this question a lot, and I, my my answer kind of changes because I'm not really sure exactly where it started. It's just. It just fascinates me, the whole idea of a real ghost story. Like, uh, there's supposedly a real ghost in this place instead of, uh, like, a haunted house where they're all obviously fake or, say, a horror movie where it's obviously just made up to, to scare people. But the the idea that there's a real ghost uh, based on something historical, like someone really died here and they've come back to, to haunt the place has always really fascinated me. Um, I used to work at a movie theater and... There were ghost stories about the movie theater. There wasn't really any history behind it, um, but there were stories about uh, Theater 10 and uh, Showcase Cinemas in Western Hills in Cincinnati. And uh, the ceiling tiles would move by themselves. People would see figures in the in the building. Uh, I was actually there after hours, and I saw what I think was a figure walk across the lobby uh, way after hours when I was a manager there. Um, and I started looking into the, the history of that, and there was really nothing there. Like, this was a pretty new theater. Nobody ever died there or anything like that. And then when I was researching for the books, I actually um, talked, uh, spoke with someone who uh, was friends with a sheriff who used to work in the area. And apparently the area where they built the showcase cinemas used to be a dumping ground for the mafia in Cincinnati for bodies. So there were actually a lot of bodies discovered right where Showcase Cinemas is. Where the is theater there. was? Exactly. Which, which is fascinating. It's like the ghost stories led me to that little tidbit of knowledge. 
and um, there's all kinds of other things that I kind of ran into um, that kind of piqued my interest in the whole field where there was these ghost stories about supposedly real ghosts that that were in these places and then you look into the history and there was actually some history behind it so you learn a lot about the history of the place and um, you get the the fun of the the ghost story so do you think is it also you're looking for the evidence of an afterlife that something's out there not trying to be too religious or anything but i mean are you looking for yes that something does there is something out there or are you just kind of looking at it for the historical aspect of it and just you know it's very interesting to see that there could be an entity there or something like that um, I'm not even sure I believe that there's something else out there. One of my favorite ghost stories that I've, I've heard, uh, it was actually in Britain, and it was about this, um, it, it's going to sound bad that it's my favorite ghost story and it's so sick and disturbing and <laughs> twisted, uh, but there was this woman who was brutally, brutally raped and, and beaten and, and all this in this apartment in, in Britain. And um, when the next person moved into this apartment, they started to see reenactments of this, this brutal beating and rape. But the thing was, the woman survived. She was still alive. But the, the ghost of what happened was still left there. So perhaps the, the whole ghost thing is more of an uh, energy imprint on, on whatever's out there, on the, on the world or whatever, that just keeps replaying and replaying, or something along those lines. Because isn't it? And this is just for my ghost hunters on sci-fi experience, so take that for what it will. Because uh, isn't there certain rocks and minerals like limestone or something that the idea is that it can store energy or something like that? Oh well, yeah, there's there's all kinds of uh, theories and stuff like that. Uh, running water apparently um, uh, attracts ghosts and limestone is a big thing. And I'm not sure how they came up with these. Like they, <laughs> these ideas. It's, it's yeah. It's a, no one's ever captured like in Ghostbusters. No one's ever thrown out the trap and 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 grabbed one of the, the ghosts <laughs> and, and put it into their containment unit in in New York City or whatever. So they really don't have a way to to quantify or to to study it except for. Um, I'm sure that the these theories are based on. There are more ghost stories around, uh, say, limestone, or there's more ghost stories around running water or something like that. And, of course, big cities are always near running water because the, the older the city, they're, they're sure. built around um, lay air rivers and, and things like that. And limestone, that's more in the, the Midwestern area of, of um, the country, and there's more superstition in that area. So that could have something to do with it. So I'm not sure how valid those kind of, um, of uh, theories are, but um, it's something that when you're actually out there ghost hunting or, or whatever, you try to, to utilize to see if, hey, you can try to capture some, some evidence of, of some voice or some, something moving or something like that. What is the most uh, compelling evidence that you've seen? You personally, not just on the internet or, you know, friend of a friend or anything like that. Um, seeing that's it's always one of those corner of your eye things like you're not sure if you actually saw something the the most compelling evidence that i that i run into when i actually do it my, myself is all audio and um EVPs. like yeah you you record something and then you play it back and then you hear something and then you like play that that little thing back and it it does it sounds like a voice and a lot of times that voice sounds like it's actually answering the questions that you have and it's really weird and it's really hard to explain. Like, even if it's um, like a radio signal or something, like, how does it answer your question? Um, I, I have a actually kind of funny story about that. There's something called a ghost box, which a lot of um, ghost hunters don't really take any merit into or anything like that. But what it is, is it's a, like an AM radio and it cycles through the AM radio stations and like real quickly so every once in a while a word will come through so you ask it a question and then sometimes a word will come through that matches with the question mm -hmm. which is kind of fun to do um, but we were we had one of those those ghost boxes and was cycling through AM radio stations and we were um, asking the ghost questions and it seemed to be answering the the, the questions and then we asked um, what is it that you want 
And then the the radio said to save fifteen percent or more on car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> like it stopped on that station as the Geico commercial was going on, and it was just perfect. So apparently, this ghost likes to save fifteen percent or more on car insurance, and that that would make a perfect Geico commercial, like during Ghost Hunters or something. Like they're using a ghost box. Everybody watching it would know what that is. And they would play it, and then, exactly. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I should pitch that to Geico. <laughs> you should. And they're the kind of company who would actually do that. Yes, they would. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to Geico if you want to sponsor us. Jeff, you got anything? Anything? Uh, I wanted to ask Jeff, uh, Mr. Morris here, about the uh, the ghost tours, uh, the Miami Town ghost tours that he runs. I mean, what specifically is involved in that, and what what do you get and see on your tours of the ghosts? Um, we started that back in 2006, so I guess that's been about... Seven years? Seven or eight yeah. years, yeah. Excuse me. Um, but uh, how it started was we... Um, I had been to some ghost tours in Gatlinburg and in Gettysburg, and what they are is you just go through the, these little towns, they're walkable towns, and they stop and they tell you some history about each location, and they tell you the ghost stories about ghosts that supposedly really happened at those locations which I always thought were great in Gatlinburg and Gettysburg. And I'm like, Cincinnati needs something like this. So I started looking for little towns that were walkable, and I found Miami Town, which uh, if you've ever been there, it's, it all looks uh, 19th century. It's, and it's Small town walkable. feel. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, and they have like buildings that look like general stores, and it looks old. So I, th- I knew of a couple of ghost stories from the... Um, from Miami Town, uh, there was a bridge collapse that that happened there, that I knew some ghost stories about the bridge there, and um, I knew some ghost stories about the cemetery there, and then I just went through the town and I just started talking to people. We're start we're starting a ghost tour. Do you have any do you happen to have any ghosts in your building here? <laughs> and everybody's like, how do you know about our ghosts? <laughs> so uh, apparently, the older the building, the more likely it is to have ghosts, and pretty much. Um, all the buildings there in Miami Town all have ghosts, so we stop at, I think, 13 places along the way. What about the Wendy's? Is that haunted? Uh, that's... A little bit newer. That's <laughs> a little newer. It's a little too far out of our walking. Uh, we go the other way. Yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes Wendy's haunts me, but... Uh, <laughs> I think that's more digestive. Oh. <laughs> that's not White Castle, though. <laughs> so you're doing another one this October with it. Another Miami Town... Uh, festival, is that correct? Uh, yeah, we do the the ghost tour itself uh, all year. Um, we do it more often in October. Uh, you don't need as many people to do it in October and um, end of September. Uh, but the first Saturday in October, we always have a uh, paranormal fest where we work with the Historical Society in Miami Town and Whitewater Township there. And we throw a big festival and we have a bunch of uh, vendors uh, paranormal people who have been on TV shows, who have their own paranormal groups, who do paranormal crafts. I, I don't know if crafts is the right word. They, <laughs> they like they like make uh, the equipment and stuff for okay. the, the ghost hunters and um, and things like that, and voodoo dolls. And, so um, they, they don't just take toilet paper and say, look a ghost, woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, they would need the string at the top that you can't see, or else it would Otherwise, obviously just, not be a ghost. It would just be toilet paper, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just yeah. get the string on there. <laughs> but it's always a good time, and we actually do uh, horse-drawn ghost tours uh, during that, where we actually have a guy with horses and a, and a carriage, and everybody sits in the back, and one of our tour guides takes them through the town and, and tells them ghost stories, which is... Always a big draw. And Anybody that misbehaves becomes a ghost? Um, whenever I, I give the tours, uh, sometimes there's not real well-defined sidewalks, and sometimes it's late at night and there's cars coming down these roads, like Harrison Avenue is pretty busy right where, where we walk, so um, I, I tell people that um, stay as close to the right as you can, you can't really see the sidewalk, watch your step there. This is where most of the fatalities on the tour occur. <laughs> and no one ever really steps out of line after I say that. And sometimes I say it multiple times during the tour, and they kind of start to catch on then. But so wait, wait a minute, they can't all be where most of them happen. <laughs> so you're you're in Cincinnati. How 
how difficult is it to because you just said Chicago, correct? Was your last book? Chicago was my most recent. Correct. Okay, so how difficult is it to get connections in Chicago, or does Keen Communications help with that, or just because obviously you're not as familiar with it as Cincinnati, you know, your own backyard? How difficult is it to go out there and you know find know where to look for it? Um. Well, I, I did get a co-author to work with me in, in Chicago, and the way that I did that was I actually went online and looked for um, paranormal researchers or people who work with the paranormal or people who have done books or who have done stuff um, in Chicago with the paranormal, and I sent them all an email, and um, then anybody who responded, I called up and uh, we talked, and then I chose, for the Chicago one, I chose uh, Vince Shields, and he was actually uh, a real good person to work with. He was real into exactly what the ghost stories were in Chicago, and um, he was able to go and talk to a lot of the business owners and, and stuff like that in order to, to get the stories. So um, it was, I guess, the internet that I was able to find the, <laughs> find the people, and then it was like a, a simple little interview process. And Bill Murray wasn't available? Um, I didn't know that he lived in Chicago. Well, he is a Ghostbuster. He is from Chicago originally. The whole Murray family are Chicagoites. Look at you with a fun fact. Seahorses and Bill Murray today. <laughs> but yeah, from Chicago and a Ghostbuster, so yeah, maybe you need to do a sequel with Bill Murray Seahorse, as your there you go. co-author. I thought the, I thought the <laughs> Ghostbusters took place in New York City. Ghostbusters did, but Bill Murray himself is experienced as busting ghost and Chicago. Actually, I think you, I, actually I think you want Dan Aykroyd. He's the one that's... In real life, is a he was a blues brother. brother. Yeah, I, 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 I can see Dan Aykroyd, <laughs> but he's from Toronto, so I don't know if that. Quite... The blues brothers or Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Okay. I mean, no, as a blues brother, he is uh, Chicago in, but uh, as good. as Dan Aykroyd, he is uh, Canadian. A. A. Uh, no, because that's also because Dan Aykroyd in real life is a big. Ghost aficionado. Did you know that? That was a fun fact. How about fun, that? Fun fact from Jason. Yeah. Suck on that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> so where can we find your books at, Morris? Um, well, they're on Amazon uh, in the Target cities, uh, Cincinnati, Nashville, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Chicago. They'll be in any bookstore, so any Barnes & Noble. Um, probably can't find them at Borders anymore. Uh, if you can find a Borders, that would be impressive. <laughs> Borders has become a ghost. <laughs> But any other, even the the smaller bookstores, you'd be able to find it anywhere in the okay. any any of those Target cities, but only for the Target city books. But uh, online, um, you can find them at Amazon or anything like that. And if they don't have it, ask for it. Isn't that the old thing? It's that that's what if they don't have it, ask for yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, it w- is there anything you're working on? Any new cities or anything you're getting ready for? Uh, Toledo, Toledo, Ohio is beautiful. <laughs> uh, they. They suggested several, and I'm um, actually looking for co-authors in these uh, cities to see which one jumps out, but um, now I'm trying to think of them. There is Vegas, uh, Atlanta, St. Louis, San Francisco, and there was another one, but I don't remember what it is. Atlanta would be interesting with the South, and even Vegas would be interesting. Yeah, Vegas with well, all the mobsters. I did Nashville, and I'm thinking that Atlanta would be similar with the Civil War history and the uh, yeah. antebellum history there. Um, Vegas, I'm not sure, is old enough to have enough ghosts. <laughs> San Francisco, I'm sure, would be. I'm, I'm sure they're pretty haunted. Sacramento was the other one. Hmm. Okay. Be interesting. Isn't Sacramento the gold rush? That's where it started. There you go. Look at that. Wow. Fun facts galore. <laughs> Actually, that was a shot in the dark. <laughs> I thought it was the gold rush. Okay. And Morris, you want to stick around for the rest of the podcast with us? I would love to. Okay. And well, when your new book comes out, come on back. Actually, you can come back anytime. We pretty much have an open door policy. Anybody that wants to come on can. Within reason. You just have to find the Bob Studios. That's right. <laughs> Except that Nick guy. Man. <sighs> he was difficult last week. He yeah. Had to call security. He was awful. He ruined our audio. That's he all did. I did. He did ruin our audio. And we do apologize last week on a side note. Uh, <laughs> our audio kind of screwed up. We got a couple new equip, some new equipment, and and we uh, don't know how to use it yet. So yeah, so give us a break here. Uh, so we do apologize. So at the end, uh, stick around. We'll have two bad ideas this week, as opposed to one. 
Okay, next thing is the news of the geek. News of the geek. Chicka bow bow. Uh, first thing is Latino Review reports that Donald Loge, Loge, I think it is. I think it's Loge. Yeah. From Sons of Anarchy and Terriers will play Harvey Bullock in Fox's Gotham. Uh, that I believe comes out in September or October. Actually, probably October after the World Series. Uh, ben McKenzie's already been cast as Jim Gordon. Ben McKenzie was in Southland and a couple other things. That yeah, I was unfamiliar with Ben McKenzie, but uh, I certainly know uh, Donald Loge and and uh, yeah, Harvey Bullock. Is that his partner? Yes, that's the uh, usually he's the bigger guy. Yeah. And in Batman the Animated Series, he's the one that's always eating a hot dog or <laughs> looks like he's going to die of a heart attack. Or eating falafel in or, uh, the Batman. You can't uh, confirm that, Tim, <laughs> in Batman Begins. <laughs> falafel. I, I, I thought you it was. I, I thought they gave him that. I thought that's the name he used. Why don't you check that up be. on IMDb? Okay, I'll check that up. <laughs> that's why Jeff's the best color man. No, that's not why Jeff's no, the best color no, man. No, no, no. Best co-host? I'll, I'll go for that. There you go. So, any thoughts on it, though? Morris or... More so, are you a big Batman fan? I I do like Batman, but I I, I haven't really read the the comic books. Like it's more okay. the, the movies and the the Christopher Nolan movies. The I think the second one is uh, Dark Knight's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Yes, yeah. I agree. We were talking about that last week, uh, and I even like the last one, Dark Knight Rises, but the Dark Knight blows it away. Thank you, Heath Ledger. <laughs> so. What you got there, Jeff? Oh, give me a second. I'm oh, a little, I'm, I'm getting used to this new Google stuff. <laughs> so, no. Uh, basically, what they're doing is Gotham. Uh, obviously, it takes it's the main character is Jim Gordon before it becomes commissioner. So it's like an Agents of Shield thing. Yeah, but it takes place before Batman hits the uh, pavement. The rumors are either he's going Bruce Wayne is either going to be preteen uh, or he's going to be you know teenager you know version. So we'll see on that one. No, no, um, I, I, I was incorrect. Oh, uh, yeah. Mark Boone Jr. plays a character named Flass. So oh, and he, Batman begins. And Batman begins. The guy that asked for the falafel. Yeah, the guy who asked for the falafel. Okay. He was Flass, not Bullock. Okay. I think I, I think I'm getting confused with from uh, Dark Knight Rises. I think uh, Bullock was. A, I remember hearing that name. Uh, that was that Matthew Modine maybe played him. Matthew Modine played the commissioner in the last one, or not the commissioner, the um, top police officer. And Batman Begins. Oh, we'll see what his... Or Batman, uh, sorry, Dark Knight Dark Rises. Dark Rises. Dark Knight Rises. So, but I'm interested in Gotham. You know, eventually everything on TV is going to be superhero related until it destroys itself. <laughs> they got Arrow, you got Flash coming out, uh, you got Gotham, you got... Was the one DMZ that we talked about last week? I think is one. Yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah, they said the preacher, preacher they're getting ready to make. <sighs> Screw you, Seth Rogen. Um, I'm trying to think what else they have. They have pretty much any Walking Dead is obviously already out. You're a fan of Walking Dead, aren't you, Morris? I am, and that's not really a superhero thing. That's comic book. We're going comic book. Sorry. Uh, Sorry, graphic novel. Well, I think zombies <laughs> may have already destroyed themselves. <laughs> they may have. <laughs> George Romero. For a, while, for a while, zombies were pretty much everything that you That was heard. all George Romero's fault, though. He, uh, he had but, some rough ones. Land uh, of the Dead. Uh, I think it pretty much lasted until Brad Pitt took it over. Oh, World War Z. <laughs> 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 oh, God, that was awful. Uh, okay, speak of Flash, uh, the original TV... Uh, Flash, John Wesley Shipp, who's also on Dawson's Creek, is joining the new CW Flash series. Uh, he, Grant Gustin stars in it as Flash. Barry, uh, he's actually Barry Allen. Barry right? Allen. Yep. And uh, so now the question is, who does John Wesley Shipp play? Uh, back in the 1990s, I think it was, early 90s, late 80s, uh, there was a Flash TV series. Mark Ham uh, Hamill was uh, the Weathermaster, I think, or Trickster, or... I don't know this one. He's one of them. So take a look. Oh, somebody just died. <laughs> somebody got shot in the studio. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, so he's coming back to play somebody. Uh, one of the rumors is that he's going to play Grant Gustin's father in it, Barry Allen's father. The other idea is that he plays Jay Garrick, who is Flash from the other universe in the DC yeah, comic books. He was the original Flash and from like the 40s when they did it. And so they, I suppose, made that the Earth 2 uh, when they were updating everything before the Crisis on Infinite Earth. So, you know, then when they joined them, I don't know exactly how 
the earlier JSA people were fit in exactly to the storyline to the JLA, but and he's a he's I think gay now in the new Fifty Two, isn't he, Jay Garrick? Yeah, I think I think they I think did. they did yeah. make him. Oh look, we're going to be so progressive, but we're yeah. going to give it to a minor character. Give it to Superman or somebody. You were about to say Bruce Wayne. I was going to say Batman. Damn it! <laughs> but we we already know Batman already has that, so not necessarily. <laughs> so you looking forward to the Flash, Jeff? I am. Maybe, maybe I'll watch it more than Arrow, but no. Well, you're only a yeah. season behind. I'm only a season behind. That's the problem is I didn't start watching Arrow until it was out on Netflix. So I, as I'm watching season one, I don't want to watch season two. And so now I'm waiting for season two to become available on an easy-to-watch format like Netflix. It's a good season this year. It's gotten a lot better, and they just renewed it for season three, too. Excellent. It was funny. CW listed, like, six uh, TV shows that they renewed this year just a couple days ago. I don't know. the uh, Supernatural, Arrow, The Others, I think, or... What's the... The original? The original is maybe that one, Vampire Diaries. And it's pretty much like anything they didn't list, let's just say they probably canceled it if you're not on that list. Uh, and then this is... Uh, going back to... I threw this in because I think this might be Jeff Morris's favorite movie is The Name of the King. Have you ever seen that, Jeff? I thought that was your favorite. With Yui Bull, who directed it? No? It wasn't a Spielberg film? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, I, I actually... It wasn't quite as good as a Spielberg. <laughs> correct, correct. It was better than E.T. Did you? I what? liked E.T. Did you? E.T. wasn't bad. <laughs> I, I think if I taking Spielberg for as a hit. whole, mm-hmm. I think that E.T. would be at the top of the Spielberg list. Really? N- maybe not the very top. I'm, I'm having trouble coming up with all of them. But Jaws? There's War a- of the Worlds? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> War of the Worlds. E.T. is better than War of the Worlds. <laughs> Did you ever see Tom Cruise throw the baseball in that? They did no, it. No, I don't remember. They did. If you go online, put in Tom Cruise throwing the baseball in War of the Worlds. You can shorten it, obviously. But he, he goes to throw it, and he obviously does not know how to throw a baseball. It is empty, like in his hand. And the way he throws it is like if he had a broken arm, you would throw it. <laughs> so he throws like me. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> it might go farther. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a big Spielberg fan, Morris? <laughs> You're not, uh, are you? Uh, no, 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 no. Why? I think that he puts things into his movies just to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> Direct, just you directly. Just, just me you know, directly. I'm fuck over more today and draw. Like, <laughs> like he's thinking, like, wait, this is going real well. Let's ruin this. <laughs> All of a sudden, um, like, like so, so, a- AI. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrible movie, but but uh, one of those 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 cringe right. moments was um, I just remember a mechanical bear holding up a heart or something oh, God, or yes. whatever it was, and it's like oh that's awful. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? Or like Schindler's List when oh, suddenly it was. It was just the red dress and just the red red but dress. It was symbolic. It wasn't symbolic. It was <laughs> it was in order just to to get you to cry, or get you to to just to to make that that much more. He didn't need it. He didn't need that red color just during that one part. It's it's just <laughs> awful. <laughs> You don't see a lot of people editing Spielberg. But but I, I think he did it because he wanted to be like the a trivia question of name a movie that's in black and white and color. Oh. <laughs> you know, there, there, there aren't a whole lot of them, and he just wanted to be one of them. Yeah. Uh, like the artist did the, what's a movie that's a silent movie, so, but, uh, but a noise. sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, silent movie was one. Mel Brooks silent movie. That the Oscars said, oh, look, we're progressive. We're going to give this uh, best picture to the artist. Why? Because it's black and white and silent. We're special. God well, damn, I was pissed at that at Oscars. I, Why are you giving it to the artist? There's no reason. I, I like the artist, but... Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen it, so I can't... seen in Schindler's <laughs> List, there was, there was a movie called La Jette. Have you ever seen 12 Monkeys? Yes. Uh, it was based on La Jette. And what La Jette, La Jette is, is a French film that's all still photos. Except for, like, three seconds, where a woman blinks. And that's all that happens. It's the only motion in the entire thing. And it's wonderful, because it's everything's disjointed and, and frozen for him because he does he's not sure what's the past and what's the present and everything. But then there's that moment that she makes everything real just for that second. And Steven Spielberg making her dress red, it's nothing like that. It's just 
for the sake of making her dress red. And it's, I'm sure it's kind of a throwback to that, and it's, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> so with all like that being it. said, were you being sarcastic that e- you liked E.T.? Or were you being sarcastic? Well, I didn't say that I like E.T. I okay. said that it's not his worst movie. <laughs> <laughs> and E.T. is, he was definitely much better in, in his earlier years. Like, um... Uh, uh, kind of like George Lucas. Like Jaws, or, Close Encounters. Close Encounters, yeah, that's what I was trying to think. Uh, Close Jaws. Encounters is a classic. I like that. Of course, Richard Dreyfuss still looks 65 years old, and that is like he does today. Well, today, he's what, 95 he looks like? Oh, no, I, I, I don't think Richard Dreyfuss aged a whole lot. Like, he, he, he always looked older than he was, and I think that caught up to him, and now he probably looks younger than he actually is. He didn't think, do Raiders of the Lost Ark, did he? Yes, we were doing the last yeah, 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 that was good. Except for the simple fact that uh, the entire story would have happened with or without Indiana Jones. <laughs> 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 he did do the Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Uh, ah, ah, that was a great yeah, film. I'm, I'm, he did actually direct it, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> and did, not to jump all over here, but on Parks and Rec, when they, did you see the episode when they watched The Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls? And the next day, they fast forward to between Ben and Amy Poehler's character. I can't think of Leslie. Leslie, thank you. <laughs> he goes, I just don't understand how you could survive that in a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Kingdom Kingdom Crystal Skulls, Morris? I did. And your thoughts? I Great film, enjoy, huh? I did not enjoy it. <laughs> He's jumping around on fucking CGI snakes. He's swinging on a fucking snake. Well, <laughs> Shia LaBeouf alone ruins any movie he's yes. in, I think. You know, he's not famous anymore. Oh, he is not famous anymore, so <laughs> we have, we probably shouldn't even talk about him because he's True. not famous anymore. That but... douchebag from Transformers. <laughs> yeah. Alleged. Alleged douchebag. Alleged douchebag. Douche yes, alleged douchebag from Transformers. <laughs> I don't mean Megan Fox, but you probably could put that in there, too. <laughs> she has thumbs for, like, feet for thumbs. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, yeah, I think I've heard you mention it before. Yes, and I that decided, freaks me out. I decided not to actually look at her hands. She's got other body parts worth looking at, and hands aren't one of them. Brian Austin Green? Oh, I thought you said... body part? Well, you know. <laughs> uh, so anyways, back to the original idea, the, the original story. In the Name of the King 3, the last mission is being rela- released on Blu-ray on March 11th. Just, just on Blu-ray, not DVD? It might be on beta for all I know. <laughs> it's Yui Bull, and if you have not seen uh, In the Name of the King, A Dungeon Siege Tale... You need to go see it. Jason Statham pl- acts out of his ass. He plays a really well-developed character. His name is Farmer. And, and his that's what occupation he does. is Farmer. farmer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the great news is Dominic Purcell from Prison Break. How low has he fallen? He stars in it. Well, uh, Prison Break isn't that big of a step up, I don't think. I mean, it it had, a, what, a good first half of a season, I think people Did Tim say. Tim Kring write it? <laughs> <laughs> From Heroes? Possibly. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. So, I think I think that might be a good Christmas gift this year. Uh, Name of the King 3. So, good job, Huey Bull. All right. Way to keep making those films. You know, we should do a top five list of top five Huey Bull movies. Blood Rain, Blood Rain 2. Uh, Alone, in <laughs> Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark 2. Is that Alone in the Dark 2? I, I think they made a second one. Tara Reid come back? That I don't remember. So she won't come back for Alone in the Dark 2, but she'll come back for Sharknado 2. Oh, why not? I think that's Wouldn't smart. you come back for Sharknado 2? <laughs> the story goes that I was watching, I think it was Letterman, and Tara Reid, when she was promoting Alone in the Dark, on Letterman, or could have been Leno, one of them, she said that she had to learn a lot of big words <laughs> yes. for Alone in the Dark because she was playing an archaeologist. Uh, the big word that she had to learn was archaeologist. We think that's <laughs> it because we watched that film and there was no big word she used besides archaeologist and Newfoundland, which she respond, which she actually said Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just been discovered in Newfoundland. Now, unless they were talking about the small little city in New Jersey, I think there is one called Newfoundland, New Jersey. I don't think she was talking about that. But I think they were, went to Canada, so they went to Newfoundland. <laughs> and the greatness of Huey Bull is that he had the balls to say, you know what? Screw that. We're going to leave that in. That's good acting. I, I don't think Huey Bull knows the difference. I mean, he's, <laughs> he is he, German. He, he is German. German. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, French Canadian is probably his fifth language, so uh, he doesn't know how to pronounce that. I could have gotten you Tara Reid as a guest on the show until right now. Oh, <laughs> we, she won't know how to listen to this anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> well, God, God, we need to 
need her on the show so she can defend Newfoundland. <laughs> Is there American Pie 5 coming out? <laughs> 7? All right, I, I need to ask, how can you get Tara Reed? Where's the connection? Oh, you're serious. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, going back to Tara Reed, she acted her ass off in Alone in the Dark. She is a great actress. Well, well for the, the paranormal stuff in Sharknado, I was a technical advisor, so oh, I'm sweet. close with her uh, really? agent. And... Her agent? So you could get her agent <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, well, granted, she would probably do whatever her agent told her to do. Well, never mind, never mind. <laughs> but, well, to give her a compliment, though, she was all right in one of my favorite movies of all time, and that was Josie and the Pussycats. That is not a good film. Josie and the Pussycats is the best movie ever. Have you seen Josie and the Pussycats? I have. It's, <laughs> uh, it's been too long, though. I don't remember. <laughs> well, they were doing the whole thing of subliminal stuff in music, and they were just signing uh, them so they could put uh, stuff in their music and sell products or whatever. I think the last musical movie I saw was Spice World. I like that one, too. Every boy and every girl, spice up your life. It's amazing you're single. (laughs) (laughs) Who's in Josie and the Pussycats? Who was uh, the main star? Was that Rachel? Uh, Rachel Lee Cook. Yeah, she was always cute. And uh, 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 what was her name? Uh, From uh, Clark's 2. Rosario Rosario Dawson. Rosario Rosario Dawson, Rachel Lee Cook, and... I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Rosario Dawson is quite hot. She's quite attractive. I, I think Tara Reed's the hottest of the three. Are you serious? I am. Be, wow. be, be, before or after the uh, boob job? I'm not sure I've really seen her in much since American Pie 1. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Sharknado? Uh, okay, Sharknado. You were a technical advisor. Uh, that's right. <laughs> you think you would know? <laughs> She was decent in American Reunion, which was not a bad film. Yeah, I haven't seen the American Reunion. That, that was Reunion. actually not... I, I have a soft place in my heart for American Pie. Yeah. Third one, eh. But... <laughs> terrible. Well, the third one didn't have Oz. It didn't. And he was back for American Reunion. Yeah. He didn't need to be. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think... Uh, who was his girlfriend in it? Uh, she was in American Beauty. What was her name? Yeah, I don't um, even know. But she showed up and it's like, oh my god, where have you been for the last decade? Isn't she the one with the uh, insane father agent? Yeah. No, no, no. That's the other one. That's the uh, Wes Bentley's girlfriend in American Beauty. That's the one that has the alleged insane uh, father. Okay. Uh, Thorn Birch. Thorn oh, Birch. Thor Birch. Okay, Thor Birch. you're right. That's you're who right. it is. Yeah, Thorn so. Birch has the in- in- insane father. So it's taking us from the Dungeons and Dragons movie, Thor <laughs> Birch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So it's taking us 87 minutes just to get through the geek news of the geek here. And we're not even done. Uh, Last thing is, in an interview with Total Film, Kevin Fag... I think it's Fag. Fag. We're going Fag. Uh, From Marvel states that a Black Widow movie, a solo Black Widow movie, could be in the works. Uh, This is his quote. Uh, We start filming the next Avengers film at the end of March. Uh, Black Widow's part in that is very big. We learn more about her past and learn more about where she came from. I'm thinking Russia. And how she became in that, she became into that film. The notion of exploring that even farther in her own film would be great, and we have some development, developmental work with that. Question is, does anyone want a Black Widow solo film? And oh, I'm I, not talking just Scarlett Johansson, because yeah. she can be in a solo film, that's fine, but no. Black Widow... Yeah, no, I I want a Black Widow solo film, or at least a maybe uh, something that explores the past with Black Widow and Hawkeye that was touched on in the Avengers. I'm like, I want to know more about what happened between the two of them. And so, yeah, I was, you know, if, if they can get Jeremy Renner and Hawkeye in, then I think that would be great. But there, there's a story to tell. I mean, everybody's got a backstory, and especially you know somebody who's a master spy and assassin. You would think she would. One have my, something to tell. One of my favorite scenes in Avengers is when she's getting interrogated, or she's actually the one interrogating. She's strapped to the chair. And That's one of my favorite scenes in that film. That might be the best scene in the film. <laughs> More, is she a fan of Avengers? Uh, movie. I I haven't really read any of the comic books, so That's the okay. movie. The movie. That's it's, okay. Well, the movie itself, I really did want to know more about Scarlett Black Johansson. Movie. Scarlett Johansson or Black Widow? <laughs> Both. Either or. Either or. And, and Hawkeye. I, did, I didn't get any backstory for them. And and really, I didn't I didn't see the Thor movie, so I didn't really the have The new one them. or the original? Or the first one? 
or either, either. the the first one before the first one I saw that came the Avengers, the, Avengers. The, the, the one before the Avengers. So not, I really didn't catch exactly what was going on. It seemed all uh, let's throw a bunch of magic together and the first the first story you're not missing much. It was decent, but uh, but it probably would have explained really exactly the, what was going on or more what was going on help. in the Avengers. Oh yeah, movie. it would certainly help. It, it was it is something that you probably should see to to know what's going on. You at least yeah have your characters developed before you come in. So that character development falls a little flat. And you wouldn't be questioning who's this green guy with the big antlers that has this you know stick <laughs> <laughs> that's controlling everything, Avengers. Uh, uh, here's my thought, and I don't. I have no backing on this. I'm just guessing from everything I'm watching and looking at and reading about Avengers Two. I think Hawkeye dies. I think so. The rumors are that Jeremy Renner's being difficult because he wanted more parts in it. I think. I, I think they do kill someone off because now you got Vision in it. You got. Uh, you also have Scarlet Witch in it. And you got Quicksilver in it as that. There's rumors this week that Ms. Marvel might be in it. Now, that could be a two-minute scene. Hey, I'm Ms. Marvel. Hey, I'm Ms. Marvel. You'll see me in Avengers 4. Hey. I'm back. Have a good day. <laughs> um, I, I think they kill Hawkeye. I think they have to kill somebody. And I th- and Tony Stark's already... Or, sorry, yeah. Robert Downey Jr. signed through Avengers 3. Yeah. They're not killing Steve Rogers. No, that, if they're going to kill somebody, it will be Hawkeye. Because you know, he's the one... Everyone just on the message boards are like, oh, gee, he shoots arrows. And I'm like, aren't we tired of this argument? I love Hawkeye. I mean, he's one of my favorite characters in uh, the Marvel Universe, so... Yeah, yeah. I, the only the only reason I think that they may not kill him is that his comic book is one of the most popular comic book, or it's a very well-received comic book from the critics and everything. It's a great thing. I think it's Matt Fraction that's writing it. Um, so that's one of the uh, few that I love reading every month, but... Um, I, I think he dies. I think they kill him. So, And that does it for the news of the geek this week. Oh, yeah, and, and Scarlett Johansson was in Ghost World with Thora Birch, so we're coming all back around. Look at that. Ghost World, I would highly recommend it. I, um, I agree. <laughs> I think I reckon, isn't there like a steamy scene in that? Or that's more Holland Falls. Sorry, I am completely... She was like 14 when she was in there, wasn't she? <laughs> I, mean, I don't call it steamy. I mean, she was... I guess was making out with uh, Steve Buscemi, but I don't think Ooh. it was. <laughs> well, you know, and and based off of a comic book, Ghost World is. Yes, it is. Okay, so I kind of like this just because I love making fun of really bad films that they should never been made. Box office bomb news this week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vampire Academy bombed at three point nine million dollars this week. Ugh. I think. International, I think a total, I think was, I want to say 4.7 million, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 10 million at the most. Yeah. Uh, no, I can't find anything online about the budget of Vampire Academy. It was under lock and key somehow, but that movie just, I, I don't understand why they even thought it, it would be good, and I'm ecstatic that it bombed. Well, it's, it's vampires, it's based off of young adult fiction, which is what they're making movies out of nowadays, so they just thought of young adult fiction about vampires. I mean, you saw what Twilight did, we gotta do it. That's why they made it. Give me a Choose Your Own Adventure movie. <laughs> I, that would be interesting, because everyone in the audience is screaming different things. <laughs> Page 32! Don't drink it! It could be like Clue, there could be like six different endings. <laughs> to make a long story short, Too late. we all arrive one by one. Uh, the other news is Lego Movie made sixty nine point five million this past weekend in just America alone. Uh, that was February seventh through the ninth, uh, and on a forty million dollar budget. I yeah. actually saw Lego Movie. You did see it. I did see it. I saw it too, and I wanted to ask you, you about it. You did see it. Wow, look at that. Uh, well, Morris, did you see it? I did not. I okay. want. I want to. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. could be some spoilers in Br- this. Bring your son. Bring your son. He'll yes. enjoy it too. Um. So. <laughs> anyways, Lego Movie. Let's just start with that. Um, right off the bat, it's a great film. Uh, it's totally surprising. I did not expect it at all. Um, hold, hold on one sec. But yeah, uh, you should see see the Lego movie. Take your son to see that. Uh, the I think the villain was based off of Jason. What? Oh. Just based <laughs> on what you told me last week on this podcast. Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. The the, the villain is, is voiced by uh, Will Ferrell. Uh, he's like angry that you know the uh, everything's out of order and chaos, and he wants everything to be in order. 
and his the way he's going to solve this is to glue everything together. All the Lego pieces in Lego World. <laughs> he wants to because you know it's like he he can't let the the different types of Legos like the Old West cannot uh, interact with space, cannot interact with you know the the medieval castles. They all have to be in their own separate land, and like you can't take things apart and rebuild things. Everything has a strict order and. To accomplish this, he plans on gluing everything. <laughs> Last week, I advised everybody, when we were doing top five childhood toys, check out episode three, people. Uh, it, it, I, I Growing up, I could never have my figures play separately. Like I couldn't have the Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, play with He-Man. I couldn't have He-Man play with Star Wars. And the reason is, it, they're not the same size. They're not from the same world. How would they get there? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> and this is even at the age of six or seven. I just couldn't do it. I still... It, my son plays with Batman, Superman. They bring the turtles into it. And, and it drives me nuts. I can't do it. I can't say anything to him. But I'm looking at him like, why would the turtles be there? That doesn't make sense. Why? Why would they be there? How do they get to be Batman? How do they meet Batman? He's not in that world. So anyways, yes. So it drives me nuts. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, last week when we were discussing Legos, Jason made the comment that he... It kept falling apart, so he ended up gluing his Lego castle together. <laughs> My dad got so frustrated with the castle for Lego that I got for Christmas. Me and him would just said, screw it, we're going to glue it together. And I, we had a glued Lego castle. <laughs> the drawbridge to open. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it worked how it was supposed to work. The problem is you try to unfold it. It never unfolded because we glued it, so I was trying to reach in over the top into the middle of the castle playing with my figure. <laughs> no, I, I loved it. I thought the pop culture was funny in it. Uh, the ending surprised me. Uh, I, I liked it. I Even though we do spoilers, I will not spoil the ending because it's... It's a little too early. It's a little too early. I'll be nice. I mean, we, um, we do have some rules, you know. Yes. You don't spoil things before they come out. Correct. Sorry. Or within at least the first couple of weeks. <laughs> Sorry about that, Jeff. Uh... <laughs> No, I liked it. I thought the characters were hilarious in it. Uh, I thought it, the beginning was a little trippy in uh, some of the scenes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That I, was great. I'm not a big acid flashback guy. Nothing against <laughs> drugs. It's just I'm not a big fan of it, <laughs> seeing it because it annoys me. But I, I thought the movie was great. Um, they said they were going to make a sequel. Shocking. Oh, yeah. They will. Uh, no doubt. And anything with Chris Pratt is awesome. Chris Pratt. And Will For uh, no Will Arnett Will Arnett. Batman. Will Arnett was Batman. Probably the best Batman since Kevin Conroy. And, and they got Billy Dee Williams and Anthony Daniels to do voices. Yes, they did. Star Wars were in it. Yeah. <laughs> Star Wars characters were in it. I would say uh, it was a little bit older than my, what my son is now. I would say if your kid's 6 or 7 to 12, perfect age. My son still enjoyed it. And he's, he's a lot younger than that. But And you, it's not that offensive or anything like that. It's just I think for that age group, I think you'll look at 7 to 12, they would eat it up. And then, unfortunately... Well, it says right here on the box, ages 8 to 12. That's right. <laughs> you bought it at a toy store. <laughs> yeah, these aren't toys. You, you bought, bought it at a toy store. <laughs> uh, and uh, that song has been in my head. Everything is Everything awesome. Everything is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness. That is, oh, my God. They sing the song throughout the whole thing. And it's Everything is Awesome. And it is... It's not fucking awesome by the end. Because I see... I love oh, the, but they do, like... Many different remixes and versions and types. It was great. Everything was awesome. I came out of the theater, went into the bathroom, and I'm not kidding you, about 87 kids were singing that song. <laughs> well, I'm at the urinal. I'm going, please, God, get me out of here. I got to get out of here. Uh, in John Noble news, John Noble. Uh, sorry, that was a quick transition. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, according to wikipedia.org, John Noble, as of 2011... His hobbies are reported to be music, painting, and narration. And that's your John Noble News of the Week. John Noble. He's a god. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Morris is just shaking his head. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, uh, for hidden gems this week, I have nothing. Uh, yeah, I, I haven't found anything this week. So uh, my, my hidden gem this week is Jeff Morris's uh, books on uh, uh, ghost... Honest. Uh, Ghost Tours, or yeah, the Haunted Handbook uh, series of books. I like That's it. my hidden gem. I've been a little busy with the kids, so sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any uh, Just a couple promos this week. Uh, still friends of the podcast is the Best of the Worst podcast. 
uh, they have a new one up about uh, films of Kevin Smith. Yeah, Kevin Smith. And they, they threw a shout out to us in it. Uh, so I want to thank them for that because, hey, in the Kevin Smith podcast, you can't be can't uh, can't go, go wrong. wrong. Yeah. Nope. So best of the worst podcast. Like I said, check them out. Uh, pretty entertaining guys. They uh, go over. Well, this like I, said, I think they did Edgar Wright movies last week. Yeah. And now Kevin Smith movies. They just kind of discuss movies. And then uh, the other thing is we're officially on Stitcher. So if you go to Stitcher.com, uh, you can look for us on there along with iTunes and everything else. But uh, Stitcher has a nice uh, radio player that you can download. And it's basically your own radio. And, you know, you can put all your favorite podcasts on there and you don't have to look for them or anything like that. So take a look at them as well. And then that goes uh, leads into final segment of the top five disturbing moments in film. Yeah, when uh, Mr. Morris was going to be our guest today, we are like, oh, what type of uh, top five do you want to do? And, you know, we know he's a movie buff. And I know he, he's a horror movie buff, but he also knows I'm not that big. So we decided disturbing movies doesn't necessarily have to be a horror movie, just something in a movie that disturbed you. A moment. A, a moment. moment. Yeah. Or if you watch Duplex with Drew Barrymore and Ben Stiller, it could be the whole film. You could put that as number one. I, I think I just fell to my number six. Oh, okay. okay. That's a tough call. Morris, you're the guest. Uh, would you like to do number five? Oh, I have to start. Uh, there, there were so many that were like right off of the, yeah. of the, of the top five. But uh, my number five is actually a Steven Spielberg film. <laughs> oh, that's a great way to start. All Steven Spielberg films, according to Morris. <laughs> it disturbed that he had to put the red coat on. <laughs> no, no, it was from Saving Private Ryan. Do you remember the scene where uh, it was kind of near the end, there was the battle going on, and mm-hmm. the Jewish-American was upstairs, and the German was up there, and the yeah. German was on top of him, and he had the knife, and the knife was getting closer and closer to him. Yeah. And at one moment, the, the, the Jewish-American soldier knew that he was going to get killed by this guy. So he starts kind of saying, no, 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 don't, don't, like that. And it's just the acting in that, it just kind of made the, the pit of my stomach kind of flip. Like, this, it, it was... It was very disturbing for me, and that's one of those those moments in film that, that I keep going back to. And it was very well done. I'm not giving Spielberg credit for it. I'm giving the actor <laughs> uh, the actor who was being killed credit was for that it. Was Adam Goldberg? I think it is. It is Goldberg. Yeah, and, he, and, he, and, and they didn't even show him get killed. They just showed yeah. his body afterwards, but well, he that knew was, that that was happening. Yeah, and that was the same scene where the other guy was like watching it happen, but he was too afraid right. to do anything about it. That was right. uh, Jeremy Davies, I think, played the other guy who let him get killed uh four feet from him right and then the, the german just walks past him and doesn't even yeah. bother doing anything with him yeah yeah it was i think that's one of my or i think that's my number five. Oh, thanks for that depressing thing <laughs> well, those disturbing moments in film it's not very uplifting <laughs> do you have uplifting ones no <laughs> yeah, what, what uplifting disturbs you <laughs> nothing i have nothing because uh, after i was doing this list and I was looking online just for things I forgot about or something in my mind. My God, I think I was the most depressed person ever. I had to watch Batman the Animated Series just to get a little bit better after. <laughs> That's not much uplifting either. <laughs> Parents died. All right. All right. Well, my number five, um, I just saw, like, after we came up with the, this is what the idea was, I had just saw Looper. Oh. And Good uh, film. Have you seen... Is- Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce like Willis. Is one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about two the years old, travel. I think. Okay. Time travel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, time travel. And, you know, the and uh, the the one the, the, the loopers are killing people. And the way they get rid of, like, they know that they're going to have their own self sent back from the future. And they're going to kill themselves. Well, one looper lets his future self go. So the the villains need to track him down. And the way they do it is they get the uh, guy from the modern time and they start torturing him by, well, first, you know, they show the guy who's escaping and he looks at his arm and all of a sudden he sees the scar with, like, instructions on where to go just on his arm. So he's like, oh, crap. So he tries to continue to run. Well, then the next thing you see, he's missing a finger and then another finger and then another finger. So he's, like, trying to escape and then he's going to go back to try and get them to stop. But as he's, like, racing to get to this place, you know, just body parts are disappearing off of him. He's driving, and then he goes to stop, and his foot is missing, so he can't even hit the brake. And then he tries to talk, and he's got no tongue. And, I mean, it was... Oh, so it's the, the helplessness. Of the this. helplessness of that, and just what you know is happening to the guy who you don't even see. You just 
imagine the torture he's going through just so they can get his 30-year-old in the future self to come back. In Looper, that's the disturbing moment? That's what disturbed me in Looper. How about Bruce Willis killing a five-year-old? Yeah, that didn't disturb me. You wouldn't kill baby <laughs> Hitler? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the whole that's the whole that's debate on, on would you kill baby Hitler? You know, the, the problem was he wasn't for sure if the maybe, five-year-old was Hitler. Maybe the 20-year-old but... Hitler, because then you could get some art from him, because that was probably oh, really famous. Yeah, you got to at least let yeah, him do his yeah, art. Yeah, yeah, good point. No, no, good you point. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you don't. But, uh, see, that was, when he brought up Looper, the disturbing moment, I thought, was the, uh, in that movie, was the killing of the five-year-old. He, Bruce Willis going around killing these kids, and it's like, oh, my God, I couldn't believe they did that. Um... My number five is American History X, the curb stomp. When Edward Norton goes up and tells the guy, put your mouth on the curb. Yeah. And I think part of the reason why it's so disturbing is back in, what was it, 96, I think it came part out? the reason. Well, many, <laughs> <laughs> many reasons it was disturbing. But I think it was 96, 97, whenever it came out. You know, you didn't, you didn't, I've never seen that before. And when they yeah. showed him and he yeah. stomped on the back of his head... Oh my god, I, I still sit, sticks with me right now. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to agree with you 100% because I put American History X as my number one disturbing Oh, moment. really? That moment is just, yeah, number one. Okay. okay. Well, you know what Jeff said. Yeah, my number, <laughs> we already know my number one, but... Uh, number four for me was Singing in the Rain, not the movie... <laughs> in Clockwork Orange. My number four is Clockwork Orange, the uh, singing in the rain scene. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what mine is. I could, that just barely missed, my, <laughs> barely missed my list. I was considering that. I mean... That's probably my number six. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I kind of pair that also with the, uh, you know, the singing and having a good old time while torturing and raping. Yes. I, I kind of put uh, Reservoir Dogs in that same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, that was on my list. And I'm like, well, it, it's the same reason. Just the joy someone's getting and the, the happy little song that's playing while they're doing such a gruesome act. And what they dressed as was creepy as hell. Yeah. It didn't make my list because I didn't really feel empathy for the the victim. I more felt the empathy. I think the purpose of the scene okay. was to feel empathy for the perpetrator. So it didn't really turn my stomach like uh, a lot of other uh, a lot of other moments. Okay. It was it did definitely occur to me, but I think that the empathy was meant to lie elsewhere. And it was meant to make you feel icky because you kind of sided with the bad guy. I, I well, that, that's enough too. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's I mean, like you know, yeah, the antihero. You know, you're it's like, oh my god, this Alec guy is insane. But you know, we're kind of liking him, and he's doing such a horrible, horrible act. And the fact that you're not as disgusted with it as you probably should be is another thing that makes it disturbing. Well, I think also because they put the rich folk as the per- people they're attacking. It's yeah. not like a person right off the, you know, a middle-class yeah. person that they're attacking. It's a rich person. And not makes it any less, but... <laughs> but, think, but, but you're allowed to beat and hurt well, that's rich what, people. It, you have more empathy for the person. <laughs> the ultraviolence. Yeah, I, I, the ultraviolence. I do remember liking that film, but that's the only scene I remember of that film because it's been so long since I've seen the whole thing but that scene still sticks with me what's your number four Morris um have you ever seen a film called a Serbian film no oh I do if you if you have not seen it never never watch it never consider (laughs) watching it it completely changes changes you and it changes you for the worst that's the one that was almost that was banned in so many countries correct i would be very surprised if it wasn't because i remember that it was, it's been banned in several countries i've never seen it never I remember never watch I it don't don't make this as any indication that you should watch this and it's kind of it's kind of well made and it kind of gets you feeling uh empathy with the, the main character but what it is is it's a guy who's a porn star in serbia and he gets out of the business. He has a family, he has a wife and like an eight-year-old kid. And then someone gets back with him that he um, that he's low on money. And somebody says, you want to make one film for this huge amount of money? And he's like, okay. Ends up being a snuff film. And then he gets wrapped into this, this whole underworld of, of, of scenes in the scene, or of, of filmmaking and the scene that I'm talking about the number four on my list is there's a scene where he ends up raping this eight-year-old boy ah. you can hear the tearing as he's ah. doing it and it ends up being his eight-year-old son ah. oh wow 
Wow. Yeah. Never watch this film. <laughs> Never watch <Whoa>! this film. <laughs> and you feel empathy for the guy, and he's all drugged out of his mind, so he doesn't know what's happening when it's happening, and oh and you don't really God. know what's happening when it's happening, and oh, it's... You can never unwatch this film. If you watch it, I can't it, unhear that. Thank uh, you. Yeah, that's nothing. That's nothing. Just, that's just stop. A, stop. Oh my. Yeah, no, when, when this I, is a brief summary of. When I was thinking of films, I like went online to look at what other people think you know might be disturbing things, and that one kept popping up on other people's lists. I'm like, well, I never saw it, so I can't talk about it. But I remember seeing that title when you said that. I'm like, I wonder what it was because I, I didn't read anything on it because I just ah. glossed over it because it's something I didn't see. But wow, ah. I know why I didn't see it. <laughs> <sighs> was that a U.S. movie or was it a foreign movie? I think it was. I think it, it, was it was in. It was subtitled. It was. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming it was made in Serbia. Jesus Christ. Well then, moving on. <laughs> Can we get something uplifting? <laughs> I, I got my threes. No, go to number three. My most uplifting of the. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> great! Well, well, let's get the uplifting one. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> it was actually from uh, a, 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 a Todd Browning movie from the 1930s, Freaks. Okay. Okay. At the, at the very end, where in the middle they they did the one of us thing, and it was to welcome her as part of their group because she was pretending to be in love with the midget. The 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 beautiful trapeze artist was uh, pretending to be in love with the midget, and then they, at the end she laughs at him or whatever. So they they make her into a freak, and then they all kind of gather around and then they start chanting one of us, and that just kind of is creepy. It's disturbing. Uplifting. <laughs> Very uplifting. Because they're joining her in. You know? Because. <laughs> yeah. Can we I go? never actually saw the film, but I've seen the, the clip of One of Us. And can, but, we go, can we go back to the Lego movie? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know what, more That's just time my I'm... number three. <laughs> Horace, next time you come on, we're going to the top five cartoons or something. <laughs> Kids cartoons. <laughs> something uplifting. Jesus Christ. Jeff, what do you got for number three? Uh, my number three, I got seven. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, ending of seven. <laughs> oh, mine's not the ending. Oh. The, the, the moment from seven that disturbed me the most was when they came into the uh, crime scene uh, after the lust killing. Okay. And okay. you just see the apparatus okay. they made this guy wear with the big knife, like, in the, the crotch area. Mm -hmm. And as he's, like, going insane because, you know, what, you know, he was made to do with the gun against his head. And just the thought of the actions that he took, uh, you know, obviously, you know, he's, you know... Having, uh, you can't even call it intercourse, but he's like ramming this blade in and out repeatedly. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's it. That is what creeps me out. And just, you know, you see the, the harness or whatever with the big blade on it and just thinking what it happened. You didn't even need to see it happen. Just thinking of it was enough to, to disturb me. I, I went with the ending of Seven. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> But how can you be disturbed when they finally t take off Gwyneth Paltrow's head? Spoiler what? alert. <laughs> it's, it's 25 years old. It's okay. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I could do the whole movie because... Should I have done spoiler alert for Freaks? <laughs> uh, 1930s? 1930s, yeah. <laughs> the statute of limitations expired on that one. <laughs> Don't do the spoiler. Don't do the ending to the 1920 Titanic film, okay? <laughs> um, right, but the, the the end of the ending of Seven. But you know what? I can go with the whole thing. I think the uh, gluttony one, um, yeah. or was it Sloth? The one where he's in the refrigerator with the refrigerator and oh, that was gluttony, gluttony. in the kitchen. Okay. He was the bot. The ending was disturbing. Yeah. I went into that movie. I saw it at the theaters, and I had I never even saw a preview for it, so oh. I had no idea what it was about. Wow. And I was like 18, 19 when it came out. I in that movie, it was a good movie, don't get me wrong. I was shocked by it by the time I left. I didn't even know what the hell I watched. It was dark. It was yeah. very dark. Uh, which, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, number two, and this th this was rough to watch. The scariest movie I've ever seen uh, was the, is The Exorcist. Okay. That movie freaks me out. And every time they do a quick... <laughs> jump of the devil like a quick scene of the devil face like for a split second oh my god that scares the shit out of me but anyways 
the the worst part of that is the spider walk down the stairs. Linda Blair. <laughs> oh my god, that thing that scares me. And I think Way Bryant does it in uh, wrestling now. <laughs> He's the one the wrestler who does it. <laughs> but when she walks down the stairs, and that's even in the newer one because I don't think that was in the original. Or did they take it out? I think it might have been in the original. They took it out for a home video, and then when they re-released, oh really? Yeah, when they re-released Exorcist in the movies in the, uh, in theater, sorry, uh, they put it back in, I believe. So when I saw, I saw it with you when they re-released it at okay. the theater, we previewed it, and that that creeps me out. That whole movie creeps me out. Um, so yeah, the Spider Walk. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> what you got, Jeff? Uh, I've got uh, we're on number two here. My number two is Rosemary's Baby. Oh. Um, pretty much the whole film, uh, but uh, it's you know uh, she uh, she and her husband move into this uh, New York City apartment building and they make friends with the neighbors and you know they decide they're at a good place that they can uh, try to have children. Well, the neighbors are turn out to be a little weird and she's suspecting that they're like Satanists. Um. And then well, she ends up getting getting pregnant, and she's worried that they're trying to get her baby. So she's like trying to do everything to stop. And at at the end, you know, she she has the baby, and they tell her that the baby died or whatnot. And she's you know knows they did something with their baby, so she uh, you know bursts in and finds the baby, and the baby's got like Satan's eyes. And you know it's like uh, she in his was, hands or no in, no in, oh, his oh, eyes. okay okay, okay. Like, oh he has his father's <laughs> eyes is the line <laughs> and and it's like and it, so it's comes down to you know it's like oh she was actually the mother of Satan's child and then you're thinking oh my god you you go back and think of all the other stuff like when when she actually uh, got pregnant they were at a dinner party or something with the neighbors and she was feeling lightheaded and passed out. And she was having these weird visions or something, which was actually the devil, you know, on top of her or whatnot. And then, like, the next day, her husband says, well, I knew you were fertile, so I went ahead and, you know, had sex with you while you were passed out because I knew you didn't want to miss this chance. I don't think that's legal. Yeah. (laughs) Well... Yeah. It was the 70s. It, it, was, yeah. <laughs> it was the 70s. It was the 70s. Sorry, I pulled your key from the key thing. <laughs> the key party. But, but I mean, because yeah, cause the husband was in on the whole thing. Oh. He, he he turned and uh, to the Satanists or whatnot. And, and, you know, so she thought she's carrying her husband's baby, and she's really carrying Satan's baby. And, yeah, like I said, that disturbs me that, you know, you know, I, even even it being the seventies, I'm like, well, you know, I, I thought you would rather, you know, not miss this opportunity. So when you're passed out, I went ahead and did it. But uh, and then the other things, and just the, that whole movie was kind of creepy. Are you so. talking about the seventies movie or the Julia Stiles remake? Didn't she do the Julia Stiles? Did they remake that? Check check that. Out. Well, well, I don't check. think they remade Rosemary's Baby. What was that one? What was it? Maybe uh, Julia Stiles was in a recent one. I could be completely wrong. It was a devil baby or something like that. I'm only getting Rosemary's Baby from 1968, Mia Farrow and John Cassavetes. Oh, never mind so. then. Julia Salas did something <laughs> recently of it. So, Jeff was, or sorry, Morris, what was your uh, number two? And please, dear God, make it more uplifting. Oh, it's not. <laughs> it it's... can't be more uplifting. You gave the uplifting one. <laughs> I gave the uplifting one. <laughs> and this is one of those, the whole film makes me feel dirty <laughs> it's like sick to my stomach after i watch it and that's hostile have you ever seen oh Hostel? yeah i yeah. avoided watching Hostel. like i said oh. i'm not a fan of the uh, horror movie and Hostel is pretty rough it's it's one of those like after you watch it you go to bed and you're thinking what would i do in that situation and you can't find a way out yes and uh the I, I guess if I had to pick the moment in Hostel, the moment would be when he first wakes up after the night of drinking, and he wakes up in this dark, dirty dungeon cell thing, chained to a chair, and then some guy comes in that doesn't... Or does he speak English? I, I, I don't, don't I, remember if he does. Uh, I know the other guy spoke German, but he may or may not speak English, but he's just in a different world and he's going to cut me open he's going to torture me he's going to kill me and this all happened out of nowhere and it's it's just a just a sickening feeling type of thing 
you see Hostel too? I did, and it's it's <laughs> it, it's the same kind of thing yes. except for I didn't empathize as much because it was girls instead of guys. Yeah. And I, when they took the skiff or whatever, what is that? The Grim Reapers sky scythe. Scythe. Sorry. And from the top to bottom on the girl. Oh man. <clears throat> Ugh. Ugh. Well, I think in two, the most disturbing part was the character of the the guy. Uh, he's in a bunch of those movies, and he's always like the the guy that you really, really hate. Is it Vinnie Jones? <laughs> <laughs> he was in a couple. Of, I think he was in the first one, wasn't he? Vinnie Jones? Juggernaut? I don't. I didn't see. Oh, sorry, Jeff. So don't look at me. <laughs> he was in one of them. I, I don't know, but he's he has that that face that you just want to hate. I think he was in two. He's in one of them. But like that jock kind of guy, yeah, and, and talking about how great it's going to be to torture these oh, people. Oh, that's right. No, that wasn't Vinny Jones. That's um, I know who you're talking about. Um, shit, can't think of it. Vinny Jones was in one, I think the first one then. But yeah, I know what you're talking about. The younger guy. Yeah. Yeah, he thought he was all hot shit and that. Yeah. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna torture this yeah. this, this girl. And Didn't this is gonna one be of them great. have a belt sander or something? Somebody have a belt I, I think, and he's uh, the guy who ended up in two chickening correct. out, not being able to do it. So, yes. well, if you don't kill him, we're going to have to kill you. Uh, number one. Go ahead, Morris. <laughs> Me? This one you may not agree with, um, but this one is the, the, the one moment in film that always makes me feel sick to my stomach uh, more than anything else. Um, and that's the end of The Prestige. Okay. <laughs> you know what? At least that's more uplifting than every other thing on your list. <laughs> but the end of the prestige, he's trying to get back. He's his whole life. He's been trying to get back at his old partner, who he mm. blames for drowning his uh, his girlfriend or his wife or whoever Damn. it was at the time. So at the very end, he decides that the way he's going to do that is to frame him for his own murder. And he ends up going to Nikola Tesla and getting this magic machine that actually yes. makes a copy of himself. <laughs> but he can't have all these copies running around. So what he does is when he, uh, he does this magic trick where he drops himself into this, uh, off, off stage he drops himself into this thing of water. So he's essentially drowning himself, and then he's assuming that one of these days, it, he doesn't know when, his ex-partner is going to come and find him and then try to break him out, and then they're going to catch him doing that and blame him for the, the his own murder. But he has to do this again and again, so he does this hundreds of times, and each time he doesn't know whether he's going to be the guy who drowns or the yes. guy or the copy that appears somewhere else. So in his mind, as he's doing this, he's thinking, hey, I'm probably going to die here. <laughs> I'm probably going to not just die, but drown. And it's just, just a sickening feeling, just what he went through to do this. I'm not kidding. That is probably the most uplifting one of your list. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that disturbs me the most. Wow. But, but because he knows he's going to die, but then he's also going to live, and he can sing and dance and have a beer with Jason later. So it's <laughs> all right. Yeah, my baby. <laughs> I did like Prestige, though. I like that movie. It's a good film. Okay, number one, Jeff, you said it was... Uh, Mine was American History American X. American History X. I'm surprised. I thought you would put this as number one. The ending of The Mist. Uh, uh, I, I, the Mist didn't come to me. Now that you mentioned, I, I don't know if I would put it on the list, but it would be consideration. That is... Oh, that is a tough one. Have you seen The Mist, Morris? I haven't, which wasn't there like Steve, a remake? Or? Well, it was based off the Stephen King story, and the movie, they they did the ending differently than the book, and Stephen King even said the movie ending was better than his ending. From Frank Darabont. Frank, yeah, Darabont. Frank Darabont. He uh, changed the ending. Basically, this Mist comes into town. You don't know how. It's a small town, typical Stephen King movie. All these people get stuck in this uh, grocery, grocery store. store. And basically, it takes a turn like it's a. You see this mo part of a monster attacking some of the people in the back uh, lot or the back docks of the grocery store, but then it takes on a bigger meaning because you have these old flying monsters attack all that stuff. Yeah, people like, don't know what's going on, and then people start going nuts inside. And this lady, um, Maggie, um, she, who is the oh, star of it, uh, uh, she play, She basically becomes a religious zealot inside the store. And thinks Marcia that, Gay Harden. Thank you, Marcia Gay Harden, who is creepy to begin with in most of her films. <laughs> um, and Thomas Jane is the main star of it. And the whole thing, and he has a son in it who's like six or seven. And Marcia Gay Harden thinks the only way to do it, to save everybody, because she thinks God's reckoning, is to uh, kill the boy, Thomas Jane's son. So there's a big hoo-ah, they fight, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you don't know what's 
causing these monsters to attack. You don't know. Maybe she's right. Whatever. They get out of the store. Thomas Jane, his son. Uh, I think Andrea from Walking Dead is actually the one character from it. Uh, is the female lead. Uh, an older lady and then an older store clerk. They all get in because they all see that Marsha Gay Harden was crazy. They get in a car. They start driving. They, you know, and the idea is you can't leave the store because once you walk out, something kills you. Yeah, every, every time somebody left the store, something grabbed them out of the mist yeah. and, you know, they were dead. So the store clerk gets killed, I think, doesn't he? Or <sighs> one of them or somebody. I don't remember one exactly the, how it went, but I think it was the four of them were left yeah. in the car. Yeah. The father, the son, and the two old people. Uh, no, the female is there, too. Okay. So, and, so there Andrew, were five of them in the... Yeah. Okay. So they get there, and um, they get in the car, they get moving and all that, and the ending is that it was actually a, uh, the military base close to the... Uh, close to the town. The town was doing these experiments and opened up another dimension. They ripped open a portal to another dimension, <laughs> so, and these creatures from the other dimension were coming. So you had, like, a giant dinosaur-type creature walking in front yeah. of them, which I thought was an awesome yeah. scene. Yeah, so, so they're, they're driving away. And the problem is... And they, they run out of gas? They run out of gas, and you hear this thing in the background, like this monster coming. So his son is asleep, and to spare his son from getting killed by monsters, they have a gun... They sh- everybody decides well, to kill themselves. They have a gun. They all decide, you know, we'll just kill ourselves so the monsters can't get us and torture us. But and they only have four bullets, and there's five people. So Thomas Jane doesn't... He goes to do it, and he doesn't <laughs> have the bullets. So he kills his son. <laughs> the, the other three the, uh, people. Three other people in the car. <clears throat> and he, he keeps trying to fire it because he's nothing in there. And he's going nuts because he just killed his son. So he gets out of the car, and as soon as he gets out of the car, the military arrives, and they clear out the mist, they clear out the, di- the monsters, and he's just standing there crying because he just killed, you know, his son. And also earlier in the show, they do, or before this, they go back to his house, and his wife was there, and she was killed too, so he had nothing yeah. to, you know, just it was him and his son. But yeah, the ending is... We couldn't believe that he shot. You know that's how it ended. Yeah. And then you see the military show up to save the day, and you're just like, oh, you're like, <laughs> all is good. Yay! <laughs> we, we, we stopped the invasion. <laughs> <laughs> so that scene alone, which I still say, you wait a little bit sooner. You wait a little bit longer before you shoot yourself in that yeah. scene. Yeah. You wait till the monsters are actually at your door. You know, before <laughs> oh, I just hear something. <laughs> but yeah, so that is my number. One. As soon as. This topic was brought up. That was my number one. So there you go. I, I'll, I'll agree with that one. Uh, as soon as the topic was brought up, the prestige was my number. <laughs> and that's. Uh, I was actually talking about it when I was first talking to, yeah. uh, to Jeff about this, and that that was what I brought up. Because that was Christian Bale in that too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Christian Bale was the other yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Batman versus Wolverine. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> it just got silent there for a second. Yes, it did. Uh, so that about wraps up another episode. Uh, I'd like to go to uh, the bad idea section. History of bad ideas. Number 56 is put in Matthew Broderick as the main star in an action film. Godzilla. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's a bad idea. That is. I uh, mean, Matthew Broderick, you can throw him in other movies, but... You can just throw him. Uh, that's true, but yeah, don't, don't expect him to carry an action movie. He, he can, you need Vinnie Jones. May, he can ride a he can ride a horse well. <laughs> oh, that, that's his wife. Sorry, my bad. <sighs> Come to bed, Matthew. Uh, All right, but yeah, since we uh, didn't get a bad idea because of technical difficulties last week, we also have a second one. Uh, number forty-seven, spitting on a grave. Everything you ever see in a movie, and Jeff, you're kind of into supernatural here. Never spit on a grave. Back me up. I, I agree. Okay. Number four. They, they even made a whole movie about what happens when you spit on a grave. I spit on a grave. Yeah. So, and, and they remade that, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank Jeff Morris for stopping by. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, you know, make sure you go on Amazon. Look, out, look up for his books, uh, the Haunted Hand books. And uh, I'm sure Morris will be back on because he doesn't have much else to do besides kind of like us. So you're welcome <laughs> back anytime, Morris. Thank so. you. There you go. Uh, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye.